From awaytogarden.com and robinhoodradio.com, this is Away to Garden with Margaret Roach, your weekly invitation to dig in and grow. Today we're going to do some multiplication, as in make more shrubs, thanks to a lesson in propagating favorites like hydrangea or elderberry or physocarpus and more, courtesy of our friend and regular guest, Ken Drews. Ready to learn the basics of shrub propagation and have plants to share or to repeat in your own garden? More in a moment, but first, these messages. Programming and underwriting support from Garden Tool Company. Garden Tool Company's wide selection of heirloom quality, quality tools for your gardening passion is backed by outstanding customer service, fast shipping, and ongoing support. GardenToolCompany.com. Programming and underwriting support from Brushwood Nursery. For more than 20 years, Brushwood Nursery has shipped the finest selection of clematis and other vines all over the United States with full gallon sized plant and free shipping. Their website is full of beautiful pictures and information on growing clematis. BrushwoodNursery.com. You all know my old friend Ken Drews, author of 20 garden books. So rather than repeat the rest of his bio, I'll share some news. Ken's being honored the evening of June 17th, 2021 by Rutgers Gardens, the Botanical Garden of Rutgers University in New Jersey, and I'll have information with the transcript of this show on awaytogarden.com on how to buy a ticket for that virtual event, which of course I would not miss. The celebratory evening includes a video tour of his garden at Peak Bloom and also a live Q&A session. Hi, Ken, and congratulations on the honor from Rutgers. Thank you so much. You surprised me, Margaret. (laughs) What, you didn't think I noticed that you were being honored? <laughs> I, I didn't think I remembered. <laughs> oh, well, you better show up, hon. <laughs> I, kn- I know, I know. Yeah, I'm really excited for the tour part. I didn't, you know, that's going to be great. Usually I see still images that you share with me, but this is going to be great. No, it's a video, and, you know, it was, we haven't talked about it much, but I was in the hospital, so it was, it was like a few days after I came out of the hospital, so I'm pointing at things with a cane. It'll be interesting to see <laughs> what happens. But I made it through the garden. So uh, we've got a video tour. Good. And you're going to do Q&A. Good, 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 yep. good. All right. It, you know, it's so, it, I'm so thrilled that people are listening to the podcast and reading the transcripts. When we get together, you really yeah. have a, a lot of people. It's great. Yeah, it's getting to be more and more. I think the... The Times columns have helped in that in a little bit because people look and and they read those and then they see the link and so forth and they see that I have a podcast. So that's great. And um, so speaking of that, um, you know, you're the author of Making More Plants, one of um, the favorite, my favorites of your books. And and we're going to make some more shrubs. But um, in a recent Times column a couple of weeks ago, I did that one about making more house plants because um, I had read on Instagram, as we, I think you and I talked about offline, um, about out uh, that the guy at Houseplant Journal, Daryl Chang, how he had like used a recycled bento box from his Japanese <laughs> takeout to propagate some, you know, houseplants that needed, especially fancy leaf begonias, and he put some leaf cuttings in them on moss and, you know, and, and kept them in there sort of percolating in the humidity. And anyway, did you have to do that with any of your did you sort of rehab any of your house plants on the way out the door that's what we talked about last time you were on the show yes and i'm i think now at this time of year i turn my attention to now you said shrubs but it's really the as you know the deciduous flowering shrubs or deciduous Mm -hmm. woody plants so it could Uh, be a tree technically and or a shrub Uh it could be a tree but Generally, it's a shrub, but uh, the reason I'm saying deciduous, it's not an evergreen. It's right. not like a, a conifer, a needle leaf evergreen. It's something that drops its leaves in the winter. Right. That, that's what we're talking about. Yes. And and I'll confess, besides the occasional begonia leaf, <laughs> I'll confess the only thing I've been prop- I've propagated this year um, are even easier ones like twig willows that I sometimes cut off some at the beginning of the season and stick it in the ground in my vegetable garden, keep it moist, and those will root practically anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I don't know about, I haven't done what you're going to teach us about. So oh. when I look up propagating shrubs or trees, woody plants by softwood cuttings, I get a lot of different lists of what will work, and whatever. So tell us, what do you think some good candidates are? Oh, and you, what do you, want you to- started a good list. Hydrangea, uh-huh. elderberry, dutzia, uh-huh. wygela, shrub dogwood, viburnum, surprisingly, 
even the early spring viburnum, Forsythia, Rose of Sharon, Fringe Tree. There, there's a lot. Right. Right. And, and some lists, you know, like I've seen lists from the Royal Horticultural Society and from University of California and this and that, other kinds of places and places that for professional propagators where they have a fancy propagation house with a mist bench and heated this and humidity control and antifungal blah, blah control. <laughs> and, and that's those lists might be much, much longer. But these are some tried and trues for you, right? Mm-hmm. right. Good, good, good. Okay, so where in the world do we begin? And this is the time, right? This is the time. Softwood cuttings can be taken from late spring to early summer. So we're really, we're talking about right now. And softwood is the term we use to describe green parts of a stem that are neither too young or too old, neither at the growing tip or in the stiff woody parts closer to the base of a plant. I, I think of it like Goldilocks. You know, it's not too soft or too hard. <laughs> the growth has to be just right. Okay. And, and you can judge the length or age of a stem for a softwood cutting by bending it. And if it snaps with a clean break, that's the place. If a stem bends and just gets round without snapping, it's too young. If the cutting bends like an elbow, you know, creases without breaking, then that's too close to the brown, woody, older part of the stem because and too mature because you want just the right age. If if it's too young, it'll rot. And if it's too old, it won't root in the same so, way. Sounds like asparagus. <laughs> you know what? You snap the ends off and it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like the snap test is like that. <laughs> but if you wanted to test, I'd say if you have a coleus, that's a good plant to test on because it'll really be round at the tip and it'll really snap in the right place. And then that tells you. Okay. And usually those cuttings are, well, one thing, it shouldn't be flowering. And if it is flowering, remove the flowers okay. because when something's flowering it's in, it's mature it wants to make seed it doesn't want to make roots and we want roots okay and if all that bending and creasing mangles the stem too much you'll learn from that where how big the cutting should be and then you can go to another stem on the same plant and cut it there uh, usually the cuttings have two to f- are two to four inches long and have three to four developed leaves or pairs of leaves. Okay. So, so, okay. So it's short, but, and, and, and obviously the, the space between leaves varies by species. So some to get two to four pairs, we'd have to have longer than like a, a two or three or four inch cutting maybe, but that's the basic guideline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But that's general, but this is specific. Collect the cuttings early in the day when they are full of moisture. Makes sense, yeah. And soft plants lose moisture rapidly, so don't let them wilt. Uh, I carry a bucket of water with me when I'm gathering cuttings, but you can also have a flat with moist paper towel and lay the cuttings down and cover them with the moist paper towel and don't keep it in the sun. Keep it out of the sun. Okay. Make more sense? You can also put them in a plastic bag. And when, when I'm traveling, if I'm in California or something and I take cuttings that I'm not going to be able to process till I get home, I will, I'll put the, that bag with the cuttings in the refrigerator. And I've done that with coleus and other eggs and begonia. And right. at 40 degrees in the refrigerator, they stay perfect for rooting. Okay. Um, you those must, not okay. being shrubs, of course, <laughs> or, or woody plants. Right, I mean, right. Yeah. but with woody plants, too. I just yeah. thought of that because yeah. it's crazy to think of something so tropical being able to tolerate that. But that, that works. Yeah. Now, you must have a place for rooting the cuttings. And every spring, I like, almost every spring, I like to make what's called a sweat box. Have you ever heard that term? I have. I, it makes me laugh. It sounds like <laughs> something at a gym or something, like, you know, the sauna or something. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that, that would be good. Uh, but it's a shallow flat with drainage holes filled with immaculately clean medium. For example, very coarse sand or vermiculite or fresh potting soil. And I like to use perlite because it, it's really, really clean when it when white perlite comes out of the bag. So I moisten the perlite 
and I tamp it down in the flat with something like a fresh, clean block of wood or even a brand new brick. I make hoops out of hanger wire and stick them in the medium corners and cover that with plastic film, uh, for example, a dry cleaning bag. Right. Uh, and it's a, we'll have a picture of this on the website, too, I'm sure. Okay. It's okay if the covering is loose. I kind of like it because if it moves, there's a bit of ventilation. And the air movement for my cuttings, uh, it still keeps the humidity, but it tends to, you know, not let them rot and make the the new growth kind of more stiff and leathery. Okay. It, if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So so basically what we're doing is we're preparing our own little germination chamber because mm -hmm. we don't have a greenhouse, right? So this is like mm -hmm. our mini impromptu greenhouse, and it's a flat, and it has drainage holes, and it has a clean medium, so a sterile medium that's fresh, not recycled potting soil. Right. So we're not in bringing in pathogens. And it's we want to keep it humid, but we don't want to suffocate them and rot them either. Right. And Right. And so you just put hoops over, as you said, and people could improvise and use mm -hmm. whatever to figure to, to have enough headroom for the as cutting. As long as it's something really clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, okay. Now, you know, some pe this is something that you might do or might not do, but some people you'll see pictures of a glass jar put over a cutting. That doesn't work for me. Or a closed plastic propagator, you know, yes. with a rigid plastic top. I think that that these cuttings need ventilation. Oh, and don't put it in sun, full sun. Right. It should be in very bright light. And if there's, as I said, if there's a little br breeze, that's just swell. And label the kinds of plants. And if you you can keep opening it up and adding more cuttings and adding more cuttings, and just put them in rows and label them and keep each type together so that they root at about the same time. Ah, okay. Now that's if that's the big deal. Now if I'm just taking a few cuttings, I don't have to exactly do that. I can use a super clean four to six inch plastic flower pot, either a brand new pot or one I've washed or put in the dishwasher. And square pots are good because you know if you line up square pots in a flat, they won't fall over. And <laughs> they also have more room. Yes. Uh, round pots, you know, you pick up the flat and they all go. <laughs> everywhere yes and you can use a larger pot you could even use an eight inch pot if you wanted to have like six six cuttings of the same kind of plant or something but i think four to six would be good <clears throat> so that's that's a smaller scale version of the sweat box and then i gather plastic bags like the ones that come on a roll at the supermarket for vegetables uh, and fruits and i also might get some zipper lock plastic bags <clears throat> uh, when i'm ready to recycle the supermarket bags i turn them inside out because i don't want the fruit juice or <laughs> vegetable juice right to right. be on the inside right i a lot of times wash them you know and then i turn them inside out and dry them <clears throat> like on some you know like where my um in the dish drainer where the silverware is, like I'll put a right. spatula and a wooden spoon, you know, something oh, tall, and I'll drape them over that idea. inside out, upside down. You know what I mean? And it, they'll dry, like hanging out the laundry. You know? Margaret, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know me, I'm upcycle, recycle over here. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> yeah. So the flower parts are going to be filled with the medium, and those are going to be put into the bags. And if it's those vegetable plastic bags... Uh, you can pull up the sides, and they, they'll often s stay up by themselves, but sometimes they flop, and you don't want them to lean on the cuttings. No. I find that if I put a rubber band around the pot, that helps keep them up. And sometimes I'll use a bamboo skewer like the kind you use right. for for barbecue and stuff and sure. or two in the corners of a square pot oh, that makes sense so we could do an individual little mini propagation thing if we're just going to go out and take a couple cuttings of our elderberry because we were going to make more elderberry for the birds or for elderberry whatever cooking jam etc or next if it's year. variegated or you know some or gold oh some so that's another reason that you might yeah. you might okay so let's let's just talk briefly about that because i kind of get the logistics the basic logistics but 
so uh, oh and i meant to say do you use rooting hormone because i mean well, i think I'll, that yeah i'll tell you that in a second okay that, that's that's an option but i just wanted to mention that the stiff gallon storage bags with the zipper closures especially if they're high quality usually stand up by themselves yes yes uh, and if the cuttings are really small and short the the whole thing can be slipped in sideways in the bag so Th that was just something to mention. Yeah. And, and getting to the hormone, let's talk about where we're making the cut. Because okay. we've talked about how long that cutting is going to be, and we've snipped it with our Felcos or something out in the garden and put it in the water. And now we have to recut it. So most soft cut wood cuttings are nodal. And that means that they're cut just below the leaf joint or node, the place where leaves emerge. And you remove the bottom leaves by pulling them off or by cutting them with a super clean knife or a new single edge razor blade. And you trim those cuttings just below that node. And if you're using rooting hormone, powder or liquid, you dip that fresh cut stem in the hormone and follow the directions on the container. I mean, we we can't really give blanket advice because no, no. it's all different kinds. And, and just, it's just yeah, and it. it's and it's important that you don't put it, you don't stick every cutting into the little jar of the product. You put a tiny bit in a saucer or whatever in a in a vessel that's not for eating and so forth. <laughs> and and do you know what I mean? You're not sticking yeah, things into the yeah. So well, so again, liquid, follow the directions. You, yeah. Right. You usually right. dilute it if it's liquid. And right. Then throw All it out. the directions. If it's yeah. powder, sometimes, depends on the container, I might use the cap, but uh, something small. And you just want to mm -hmm. dip it and you could tap it to get the excess off, but you don't want to take it all off. But when you make that cut, it's moist. So it really does cling to the yes. cut end. So now I go back to my rooting medium. And I'll make a hole in the medium deep enough to take that cutting so that the lowest node is just below the surface. And I use a clean pencil to make a hole. I label the pot, or I, I promise I'll label the pot. And then yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I label the pot and press the medium, for example, my perlite, back around the cutting. And I do it so it makes perfect contact. I do it kind of hard. You can also use water poured gently from a small watering can to settle the medium around the cutting. And you mentioned how commercial growers use mist and humidity is high and the cuttings are kept cool and they usually have bottom heat, <clears throat> but that's not really practical <laughs> for us. No. But in the summer when it's humid and warm outside, we're so, we sort of have that condition. Right, and again, not in direct <coughs> sun because we're not trying to parboil these things, right? Bright light, no, but right. not direct sun, right? So you place your cuttings or your pots in bags in a spot outdoors where they get very bright light, no direct sunlight, like you said, and it's fine if there's a gentle breeze, and you check the medium to keep it moist. Uh, but, you know, in, in the time that it takes to root, which is often three weeks or so, it doesn't even dry out. It doesn't have time to dry out. Right. It kind of depends on the cutting. But you, if you see new growth on the cutting, it's probably got roots too. Uh, sometimes they recommend giving the cutting a tug, but I've torn roots off doing that. Yeah. So I usually take a butter knife and pry it up in the perlite to see if there's roots. And if their roots are about one inch long, it's great. That's it. If uh, there are no roots, you can just stick it back into the medium. And then when it is rooted, you can pot up the rooted cuttings individually. And just like with seedlings, you want to harden it off for a week or so. So you put it out of sunlight in a protected shaded spot. Uh, and, you know, taking cuttings, softwood cuttings is so satisfying because the success rate is so high. And you can make more plants to use in the garden, you know, if you wanted to make a hedge of something or m more likely to give as gifts or maybe there's going to be a plant sale, something like that. Right, <clears throat> right. And it's, you know, when you give a visitor a plant to take home, well, that's how we got so many of our plants. And then you look at that plant and you remember the person. Yes. This is win-win. 
Now, so so then let's just, so, so you mentioned that, for instance, if you were to see a variegated piece of something of one of these easy to do shrubs, you might try to propagate that to see if it could then become a permanently variegated specimen. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, with, ta- with growth above the ground, it almost always remains variegated. But I, I have a gold leaf Sambucus that's an American Sambucus. I have a variegated Sambucus with white edge. And they're like, you know, two and a half weeks, you got roots. And that's elderberries, yeah. Elderberries, right? Yeah, yeah, Ornamental. Yeah. I guess I'm saying ornamental elderberries. Okay. Because uh, they, they do fruit. But it, you know, it's a little dangerous to say this. But if the fruits are black, generally they can be used for jam or something but you know in in europe they they cut the flower heads and dip them in batter <laughs> yes i know <laughs> and fry them. i don't yeah. do that but yeah. i think that if the berries are red that you leave them for the birds oh well that might be the american one anyway we're not dealing with that yeah so and and so then the aftercare is like any new young thing and you're mm-hmm. like you said you harden it off and you you know tend to watering and so on and so forth and and it's going to take a number of years depending on what it is to grow into something that you're going to put out in the garden it's not instant but it's free <laughs> and well, you, can, you can put it out in the garden the, that year uh, in some okay. place if because, you can take care of it if you can take care right. of it out or maybe you make a splinter nursery or something yeah uh, which i do and you know these, if something takes three years to become a four-foot shrub or a three-foot shrub, uh, it always seems like, oh, my gosh, that's so long. But think of all the things we planted that we thought we'd never see or yeah. that it would take too long. And you're not standing there tapping your foot watching it. And before you know it, it it's a shrub. Right, right. But and- it, I guess if you're going to plant it directly in sun from that hardening off place, you might want to put some... I was going to say Rime or something, uh, but I used to use old kitchen curtains that I found, you know, the the polyester, gauzy, yeah. translucent curtain. Shade cloth. <laughs> the shade cloth, right. I'd put it on a couple of stakes, make a little tent for a couple of days, and then the the little baby shrub can be in full sun. Yeah. Uh, you're you're talking about this and I'm think I'm looking out the window at five foot tall shrubs that started as cuttings. Right. And, and the thing is, if you do it judiciously, if everyone were to go try this, and, and we're encouraging people to try this, this is fun. It's exhilarating if it works to make more plants of mm-hmm. any kind. And, and it boosts your confidence, plus you can share, which is great, or repeat, um, as you said, whether for a hedge or otherwise. And, and, and you know what? Some of them may not work. Like I know people who say, oh, roses are easy to do like this. Oh, my some gosh. Of, and and. <laughs> And I, they would rot, rot. I guarantee, if I tried it, they would rot off and get fungal diseases and whatever. So, it, you just never know for one from one person to another who's going to have success. The timing can be different. The variety or species is different. Do you know what I mean? There's so many variables: the humidity, the temperature, the blah 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 blah. So we're just saying try it, and you have nothing to lose except some snips from this shrub or that shrub that you can take judiciously. It's not going to mar the shrub, right? Yeah, I th- I think there's some people who can bo- who are born to root. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Our friend Adam Wheeler at Broken Arrow Nursery is like oh master propagator. Yikes. He could he could reproduce anything. He's amazing. We used yeah. to say they could grow an oak tree from a pencil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so we just have a minute or two left or whatever. Um, any other key points that we didn't cover, or because that you know I was gonna bring up some stray thought over here if, well, as we, usual. It, I talked a lot about the sweat box and we'll have a picture, uh, but you could start small, you know, start with one pot with some medium in it and one plant in a plastic bag that's open or a couple of woody deciduous flowering shrubs, Uh, you know, and if at first you don't succeed, you're going to be a gardener. Yeah. 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 Indeed. Well, have you ever killed a plant without learning something? No, no, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. So, yeah, so lots of propagation at this time. I mean, it's time for successions 
of many things in the vegetable garden and even of the flower garden. Like my flower farmer friends are sowing more zinnias and marigolds and cosmos so that they have them well into fall. You know, the oh, early second ones. sowing. Yeah. Oh, they do four or five for ah. the flower farmers. Yeah, they do four or five sowings. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but, you know, beans, greens, lettuce, arugula, cilantro, you know, basically everything in the vegetable garden except tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, potatoes, you know, those long season or tuberous things, you know, you start over, you, you keep going. Otherwise you don't have any veggies in uh, September. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's a, there's a lot of propagation at this time. And this is just a, we're just encouraging people to try this and get excited about it and feel good when some of them work. And then you'll always like you just did look out the window at that shrub and go, I grew that. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I grew that. So, well, thank you, Ken, for the lesson. We'll have some pictures, as we said. We'll have a full list of some of the ones you recommend. Um, And people shouldn't forget that uh, next Thursday, we'll have the information on next Thursday night, the 17th of June, 2021. They can join uh, this fundraiser for Rutgers Gardens that's honoring you, um, and we'll give ticket information on that. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. That was great. Go take some cuttings. (laughs) (laughs) It's the time. It's the right time. I'll talk to you soon. Good. Programming and underwriting support from Brushwood Nursery. For more than 20 years, Brushwood Nursery has shipped the finest selection of clematis and other vines all over the United States with full-gallon-sized plant and free shipping. Their website is full of beautiful pictures and information on growing clematis. Brushwoodnursery.com. Programming and underwriting support from Garden Tool Company. Garden Tool Company's wide selection of heirloom quality, quality tools for your gardening passion is backed by outstanding customer service, fast shipping, and ongoing support. GardenToolCompany.com. And I'll talk to all the rest of you soon again, I hope, too. Now, don't miss an episode. You can subscribe free to the podcast version of the show on Stitcher or iTunes or Spotify. And you can find me anytime at awaytogarden.com or on Facebook and on Instagram as at Away to Garden. And happy gardening and propagating meantime. Away to Garden with Margaret Roach is a joint production of awaytogarden.com and the smallest NPR station in the nation, Robin Hood Radio.